Oh right, my merits. Um, yeah, I am even again for merits. And I've got fourteen dollars and well, now that I've got past that first exam, I guess I might as well start expanding my palette, as Professor Potsdam says. So. Hey, you guys! Are either of you interested in running for class office? Like, president? I don't think... What do you have to do to run? Not much. You just have to tell the teachers by the end of this week that you want to run. Then next week, everybody votes. Oh, and you have to have a clean record. No demerits. Yes, I have no demerits. There are only two positions for the freshman class, president and treasurer. The upper classes have more because they do more events and stuff. The freshman officers don't do anything? I'm sure they do something, just not as much. Like, the junior class is in charge of the prom, and that's a big deal. And then the same people who run the prom junior year have to run initiation at the start of the next year because elections haven't been held yet. It's a ton of work. It's much easier for freshmen. You probably just have to go to meetings with the teachers and not a lot. So are you interested? I... no one would vote for me. But that's why I'm asking. See, Minnie Cochran is obviously going to win president, so it's not even worth trying for that. But the treasure position's open. Pastel says Jacob says he thinks he'll win it easy. So I want someone else to win. Anyone else. William isn't running for president in his class again this year, so it's perfect. He can endorse a freshman candidate, and then they're sure to win. I'm not sure that's... Why don't you run? No way! Class officers have to have meetings with teachers. I see way too much of them in class already. Uh, I could have meetings with... And grabby. Uh -huh. I like where this is going. Speaking of which, we need to pick our classes for the re uh, bleh. Mm -hmm. Rewind, start that over. Speaking of which, we need to pick our classes for the week. Yes, we do. Okay, my stress is super high. I was failing so badly last week. So we're gonna sleep. And then we're gonna take red. I won't take blue this week. I'll take red, white, uh, red, green, black, and white. And, uh, yeah. So. Let's expand our palette, shall we? Ooh, no more stress. Okay. As I'm resting, I hear something in the hall outside. What's oh, you? There's a box lying by the door, wrapped in plain brown paper, and Donald backing away from me. What? Is this mail? I thought mail only came on Saturdays. This is gonna be a prank, isn't it? Uh, hi! Just delivering a package for Urchin. Oh, stuff from home that got mixed up? That, or Mom thinks I need a dress. Well, you're already wearing one, sort of. Yeah, but this one doesn't match my eyes. I don't think Virginia got anything meant for you, though. I don't see... I, I didn't see any packages. I'm sure mine will show up eventually. I guess I should bring that inside. I can do that. He quickly picks up the box. Uh, where should I put it? Something seems strange about this. Hang on. How do you know what color it is? You haven't opened it. It's completely wrapped and taped shut with a big label on it. Magic, you know. And if it got sent to you, how come the label says Virginia? Um, I relabeled it? There's something you're not telling me. <laughs> Rats, you're not gonna fall for it. This is some kind of joke, right? This is a bomb. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> what kind of joke is that? Nah, I don't know how to make one that works but isn't dangerous yet. Guess again. Guess. Um, a jack-in-the-box? With water balloons? I should have thought of a jack-in-the-box. I already did water balloons this month. Last guess. A cream pie with itching powder or something in it? Okay, not a pie. The box is the wrong shape, but some kind of dessert. Nope, no food. More like the other end. Oh, gosh, what did you put in there? The other... You in a box? <laughs> It's not mine, it's Jersey Dung. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> that is disgusting. 
<sighs> girls. I don't think most boys would be happy about getting a surprise present of that either. Do I tell you to... <sighs> okay, when I do your route, I'll ask you why you're doing this. But right now, please take that disgusting thing out of here. Anyway, you are not leaving that in my room. You got a better idea? Take it back to your room and sleep in it. Oh well, it was worth a try. Later! He picks up the box and walks off, whistling nonchalantly. <laughs> if I hadn't been here... Yuck! Unless... How do I know that's really what was in the box? Well, considering the two of them, it couldn't have been anything good. <laughs> Crisis averted. Uh oh, this is one of his classes. Ah! Get to your seats. Hurry up. No chatter. In this class, carelessness might cost you your fingers. He wouldn't really cut off students' fingers, would he? I don't think that's what he means. <laughs> I think he means you could probably blow your own fingers off somehow. Here you will be learning the seductive art of red magic, the evocation and control of energy. With this power, you might summon a breeze, light a fire, or call a distant object to hand. I say that is seductive, not because of the power itself, but because simple minds prefer simple solutions. <laughs> Why are you teaching this then? Blast your enemies with lightning! Tear buildings apart with earthquakes! Let the world around you burn! Fall victim to such vulgar fantasies, and you leave yourself vulnerable to those capable of creative thought. There are many approaches that direct force cannot defend against. He snaps his fingers in the air. One inattentive moment, and you lose control of the forces you have summoned. After that, you will only be remembered as an unpleasant stain on the walls. He rubs his hands together and gives a nasty smile. Now for your lessons. I love his classes, they are so interesting. <laughs> <coughs> When I arrive at the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Hello, little seedlings! Please take your seats! Today you're going to learn about green magic, the magic of life! This is a very important skill for any witch or wizard to have, especially when you get to be a certain age. Your body is a garden to be cared for, with proper tending that could last you for centuries. Well, that's interesting. Slowly, carefully, you must encourage your subjects to grow in the direction you prefer. Be patient, and the rose vines will lose their thorns and twine around you. <laughs> or you. <laughs> if I can heal, it can kill. What happens if you force something to grow the wrong way quickly? Why would you want to do that? Because you don't like the life in front of you. Well, if that's your plan, I can look forward to working with you for a very long time. <laughs> Life has its own flow. You can change it, but the harder you push, the more energy you'll need. To cause a great change in an instant takes immense power. <laughs> so you'd better get started. Yay! I'm learning the magics. Oh, it's you again. I arrive in the classroom feeling slightly apprehensive. Black magic? Will there be zombies? <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning! Has everyone got a smock or an apron? There are plenty at the back! Aprons? What are we going to do with those? For those of you who are new to our magical traditions, I should reassure you that black magic has nothing to do with death or evil. There's no such thing as evil magic. There's only magic. The bad and the good come from how you choose to use it. Black is the color of weight, solidarity, and permanence. Black magic is the magic of enchantment in physical form. All wands and things like that are created with black magic. This does mean that cursed items are enchanted with black magic as well. That might be how people got the wrong idea. Hey, it's Raven Darkstar. A pale girl with dark hair raises her hand. Yes, Raven? Uh, since you're enchanting matter and bones are matter, you could use black magic to animate a skeleton, right? That's an interesting question. Maybe she really is a vampire. Who could certainly enchant a skeleton to hold a spell or react in some way? 
You could set a skull to chatter its jaw when anyone came near, like an alarm. But to make something that could walk around and act on its own, you'd need to bind a spirit to it, and that calls for another kind of magic. We will get to combine techniques later in the year. Now, one of the easiest ways to infuse magic into a physical substance is to mix things together in liquids. Potions. And that's what we'll be starting with. Always remember to wear a smock or apron. Potion stains can ruin your uniform. Okay, dokie then. It's Friday. I need to make up my mind whether or not to run for class office. I still don't know exactly what the jobs involve, other than working with the teachers. And that means spending time with Professor Grabner. It could help to get me on his good side. Or it could give him more opportunities to make my life miserable. That's if I can actually win the election, of course. I've never been in an election before. I don't think I have any enemies in the freshman class, but I don't think I'm that popular either. Okay, so... President's in the bag for Minnie. And I definitely want to run, so I guess I'm going to go for Treasurer. Right, I'll go and submit my name to Professor Potsdam and see what happens. Oh, good grief, you again. I need to drink some water before I do your voice. <coughs> when I arrive at the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam standing by the chalkboard. Good morning, star shines! You'll need to sit down before we can start, but take your time. Relax, get comfortable. That's very important when working with this particular style of magic. Taking her at her word, I yawn, stretch, before I settle into my seat. To some people, white is the absence of color, a blank canvas. In the non-magical world, white is a complete spectrum, all colors combined into one. In some ways, you can think of white magic as either of these things. White magic is the tool you use to access the spiritual realm. Ghosts, dreams, creatures from other planes, the thoughts of those around you. With white magic, you can experience and communicate with things that are normally hidden. There is one thing I need to warn you about. Some people have tried to use white magic to control minds and spirits instead of asking for their aid. Don't do it. You will regret it. Now, shall we go on with the lesson? What sort of warning is it that? Does she mean that it won't work? Or that we'll be expelled or arrested? Or our brains will melt? Or what? What? Maybe she'll tell us more later. Ooh, three. Nice. So, are you going to do it? I don't think... Aw, oh, come on. I... I'm not the sort of person. <laughs> Cutie, are you going to run for treasure? Yes, I am. Yippee! Now I can tell that spoiled brat to kiss my... Hey! What's going on with you and Jacob? Sorry. I've gotta go make plans. She leaves the room. Ellen sits on her bed and brushes back her hair. Such a strange thing to get so worked up over. Well, she is very competitive. If it really matters so much, she ought to do it herself instead of trying to get everyone else to do it for her. Eh, I shrug. I suppose. Do you think Do you think her brother will do what she says? Promote someone just because she wants him to? Probably. She's his baby sister. He looks out for her. He's so sweet. Oh, Ellen's got a little blushy blush on her on her little cheeks. I think someone's got a crush. Oh, he is. Is he? I love how the music just changed. <laughs> Ellen, have you got a crush on William? What? No! Maybe. Ah. She sighs and flops back onto the bed. Yes. You can't have him, he's mine. That's <laughs> not. No, 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 no. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, you like William, so what's the problem? He's cute, he's responsible, he's a good student. He's popular. So? So he could have any girl he wants. And he'd never want a girl like me. Guys want someone pretty who likes makeup and dancing and pouts until she gets her way. 
Jenny's not even 13 yet, and she's already got boys chasing her. Boys think of me as just a rock with hair, a useless fuzzy lump. Oh, Ellen. I relate to you so well. William is nice. He would never. But he would never. He's wrong for you. Um. <sighs> well, you should just tell him you like him, girl. I know it sucks and it's really hard to do, but... Then you know, right? If you like him, you should tell him. No! What's the worst that can happen? He says no? Then you know, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. And what if he likes you, and you're just wasting time not knowing it? That's not very likely. You'll never know unless you try. We're horses. We're supposed to be daring. You're cute and clever and sweet. You're not hopeless. Maybe he likes you. Maybe he doesn't. There's only one way to find out. I... I'll think about it. Aww. Go, Ellen, go. <laughs> so, are you and William working on your plan to take over the class today? Well, we can't today, exactly. Why not? He's not here. What do you mean he's not here? It's Saturday, the Big Apple Festival in the next county over. Most of the upperclassmen go there on field trip. It's over an hour away, so they have to leave early. Why didn't we hear about it? Freshmen aren't allowed. It's a privilege. What's an apple festival? Seriously? A harvest fair. Don't you have those where you come from? I don't know. They get a big old-fashioned cider press set up on the green so everybody can watch the apples being crushed, and they sell jugs of it. There's lots of food. Apple donuts, apple sausages, apple upside-down cake, caramel apples, squash apple soup. Well, it's not all apples. Big bake sale, craft sale, art contest, and there's fiddlers in the day, and then a contra dance in the evening. From the look on Ellen's face, she has no idea what a contra dance is, but she's not going to ask. So, the seniors are going off to a dance without us. Well, it doesn't matter. What should I do today? <sighs> There's really nothing for me at the mall. Just, except for that frustrating claw machine thingy. And I gotta get smarter. There we go. Yay, I'm smarter. Uh -oh. After dinner, I'm walking back to my room with Ellen and Virginia when I notice a small box sitting in front of the door. Oh no. Donald, what'd you do now? Another box? Oh, not again. She pulls back a foot. Excuse me. She pulls back a foot to kick the offending object and pauses. Hey cutie, this one's for you. Me? I peer down at the box. Sure enough, it says, to cutie, in flowing letters. Nothing about who sent it. Is this another one of Donald's tricks? Why would he send it to me? Because I wrecked his prank last time. I don't want to know what's in there. I'm throwing it away. Well, there's no good reason for this to be here, is there? It could be from a secret admirer. I don't think so. It's probably a booby trap. I'm not going to fall for it. Oh, I, I must have told you guys about it, because I'm like, how do you guys know about the box? Would he really use the same trick twice? My brother is not the brightest tack in the box. I guess. Why do you feel so mad about that? Give me that. I scoop up the box and carry it off to the nearest trash can. There. Problem solved. Well, that week flew by in a hurry. A uh, diary. Elections. We'll be having elections for freshman class president and treasurer next week. Virginia thinks she can get William to back a candidate for treasurer, and that will help them win. She wants one of us to run. We have to decide by Friday. Prank present. Donald tried to leave a box of dung as a present for Virginia. Disgusting. Luckily, I was there and able to chase him off. School politics. I have decided to run for freshman class treasurer. Ellen's heart. <laughs> Ellen has a crush on William, but she's afraid to act on it. I'm trying to encourage her to just tell him and get it over with. Saturday. The upperclassmen are away at an apple festival this week. Trash disposal. 
Somebody left a booby prize for me outside our room. I threw it away without opening it.